Hello, welcome. Today I'm going to be doing a bit of a min-max guide for Germany. I made the guide for the Soviet Union and somebody in the comments asked if I could do one for Germany. Starting off, focus-wise, we're going to go Rhineland into Army Innovations Treaty with the USSR. This is a standard delay four-year plan start. Uh, the reason we want to delay four-year plan is we want to be done 1937 industry check by the time we get the 100% boost. So we're going to research both basic machine tools, construction one, and electrical mechanical engineering. We are not going to research anything with this research slot. We're going to use this to pass, also known as tech juggling. When we've saved up the 30 days, we'll swap into electrical mechanical engineering. When that finishes, we'll swap that into basic machine tools. We will also need to do it again for dispersed industry one so that we are researching dispersed industry two when we get to the four year plan. Starting industry wise, let's just turn off the ships. You only really need maybe five on guns. You could probably even go lower. I am going to build tanks. You can honestly play a game as Germany where you don't build a single tank. You just build infantry and cast, and you can conquer the Soviet Union doing that. So to start off with, these tanks are kind of useless until we can make upgrades to them, but I'm going to leave them just for the production efficiency. And because we're just going to be using these as filler in our tank divisions to make up for a deficit of medium tanks. Otherwise... I am not going to be building tactical bombers this game. You can build tactical bombers if you'd like. I do find tactical bombers work better against navies than, than cast do. I find cast takes higher losses. Um, this is a pretty good balance. Um, I'm going to import one rubber. There's an argument to be made I shouldn't import any. But I'll, I'll import the one. Factory-wise, these four states here are the Reich Autobahn states, so we're not going to build in those. The other ones, so I'm going to start off by building infrastructure in these states. And as the infrastructure finishes, we're going to want to start working on civilian factories. So we're going to slide this one and this one up and increase them to max level. And then we're going to do the same with these two. That's going to be our starting industry. Afterwards, we're going to build up these two states because they have a large amount of slots and they have nothing in them. And they're also protected from allied bombing. And finally, Navy. The battleships take too long. They're not worth it. One might argue you should also delete the Admiral Hipper class, considering how little has actually been put into it so far, but I'll finish it off. They're cheap enough. We do need we do need some ships for sea lion. If you'd, if you'd like to know how to sea lion every time, I did do a video on that. And then we're going to train our Navy. We're going to get a little bit of experience from that. We're going to use that experience to create a new destroyer. This new destroyer is going to be the amount of naval supremacy you get from a ship is based on the hull type. The actual stuff on the ship does not impact anything. Okay, and we're going to want to make sure we're not training in the Danish belts. The Danish belts are an Arctic Sea. They can become an Arctic Sea and they'll end up attritioning your ships for no reason. Air Force will just bring them down there, merge them up. We're going to send about 200 tactical bombers to Spain. Army, just control click this button. It'll select all of them and then we can separate off the tanks. We're going to swap one of these tanks to a motorized division. We're doing this so that we can grind both Panzer Leader and Cavalry Leader at the same time because we'll have over 40% armored and 40% motorized. We are also going to start training up as many Cavalry divisions as we can. Why Cavalry? It's the smallest division we have and we need about 70 divisions to be able to send four volunteers to Spain. I forgot to do two things in this. One, anti-air. Very useful. Two factories on it. That's most of the anti-air you're going to need for the entire game unless you're building very small divisions. And then we'll take one factory off fighters just to start producing a couple of transport planes. They will help tremendously for the invasion of the Soviet Union. But just get that small trickle started now. So it's now the end of January. We have saved up 30 days on our research. So we are going to switch electrical and mechanical engineering to basic armor protection, which gives us welded armor. This research slot, we are going to put them into electromechanical engineering. That is going to save us 30 days on that. We also now have 10 Navy experience. This is going to allow us to design a destroyer. This is the destroyer, the smallest gun you have, one torpedo and biggest engine. This is typically known online as a roach destroyer. And we're going to produce about 10 of these. Outside of that, after we get enough experience, I'm going to put this sub to design into production after we're done these 10 destroyers. Okay, so we just finished both electrical and mechanical engineering and the Rhineland focus. With this research slot, we're going to leave it. We're going to tech juggle into basic machine tools. And then with the Rhineland, we're going to continue on to Army Innovations. And for advisors, we're going to be appointing Martin Borman. After Borman, 
you're going to want to go for Goggles and War Economy, stopping off for the Captain of Industry when he becomes available. I will not be going to Free Trade. In multiplayer, 100% you should go to free trade, but we're not in multiplayer and there's no guarantee that the AI is going to trade with us. And by going to free trade, we are going to need to trade for resources. And that's just going to cost us sieves, with, which isn't worth the construction speed bonus. In multiplayer, this is 100% worth going for though, if you can actually coordinate with the rest of the axis. So now that we've saved up 30 here, we're going to switch this off. We're going to just put it into the mechanical computing. For the time being, we are not going to finish this. You're going to finish basic machine tools in 17 days. When this is done, we're going to switch this to dispersed. So with basic machine tools now done, we're going to switch mechanical computing to dispersed industry one. We are then going to do tech juggle with this one into dispersed industry one. You have to do it once, otherwise it just does not get completed in time. With our next 150 political power, we're going to get Goebbels. Still moving towards that war economy. With the research slot we researched this with, we're going to go for 1934 medium tank chassis so that we don't waste the 100% boost we're going to get from doing the treaty with the USSR on the basic medium tank chassis. Okay, army innovation's done, now treaty with the USSR. We also now have exactly 140 days until we are going to complete four-year plan and we're 170 days on dispersed one which means we're gonna to have to delay four-year plan by one day so now we're going to swap dispersed one to improve machine tools two and then we're going to swap this into dispersed one it will be finished in 133 days treaty with the ussr will be finished in 132 days to prevent that from happening we would have had to have done crop but instead we're just going to delay four-year plan by two days that's going to be the fix for that. So I forgot to show this up to this point, but with the cavalry you're training, you're never going to use these divisions. So just try and deploy them the second they hit 20%, you know, as close to when they hit 20% as possible. Have them high equipment priority with their own low priority theater so that they just never reinforce. I haven't been doing it properly, so we're not going to have nearly enough divisions for the Spanish Civil War. So the Spanish Civil War is going to be firing within a week. And to fix this, I think we're going to have to switch all these guys to cavalry because I've messed this up. If you automatically deploy them just at the start, it doesn't matter that much, but we're gonna need their equipment just so we can bam out as many divisions as possible over the next couple days. We're gonna be a little late to the Spanish Civil War, but that's okay. Okay, there's construction one. We go on to construction two from there, and we're just gonna be sitting here spamming this button as soon as they're ready. Okay, there's the nationalists. And if we go and check, we can only send three divisions. We will send them air volunteers and start a lend lease at this point in time. We are going to lend lease them a couple of trucks. These trucks are important because when you send volunteers, you do not use your own trucks for motorization purposes. You use the country you sent your divisions to, trucks. And at this point, I am reminded Germany does not start with that many trains. I forgot to put trains into production. Okay, we're going to take one off of infantry equipment and put it onto trains. I should really plan these out more. There's Treaty with the USSR. We cannot start the next one yet because Dispersed is 71 days away. We're going to have to wait until we waste two days. We need to waste two days just so that this tech finishes the day before that one. But we're at 155 political power, which means we can go to War Economy, which is nice. And we are still trying to just spam out these divisions. Okay, now that we've crossed 60, I'm going to check again. Okay, it's actually 60. 60 is the threshold. So we're now going to send our tanks and our motorized infantry. I'm going to be doing the same grinding that I did for the with the Spanish Civil War for the Soviets. I'm going to be trying to get... I'm going to try to get Panzer Leader, Cavalry Leader, and Combined Arms Expert on one general, and then organize her on a general that has Brilliant Strategist. Now you're probably wondering, why don't I do Guterin or Von Manstein? They already have traits, so it slows down the grinding process. I think we'll go with Sepp Dietrich here for the Spanish Civil War to start with. And then we'll do Maximilian. Why him? Because he's cavalry leader. And that's the harder of the two traits to grind. One day, two days, three days. Just to be safe. We're now at 57, so that lines up. This will now take. This will now be done in 60 days, so. We have a little bit of a margin of error. Delaying that by three days is, it means nothing in the scheme of things. But I'm not going to show this. This is just, this is going to take way too long. It's simple. Just keep fighting. Just keep fighting wherever you can. Make little encirclements. You're not trying to win quickly. Win slowly. It'll benefit you far more in the future. 
The main thing about grinding generals is that the longer they are in combat, the less experience they gain per day. If you want to maximize your experience gain, you want to stop combat every day or every other day. Now we are going to assign Walter Modell. He's not a horrible infantry leader. Um, and if you can get a little bit of experience and then assign him an area defense order, they will now build up their planning bonuses and he will grind organizer, but you can move your troops freely. One thing I forgot to mention about the Spanish Civil War is before you get to Panzer Leader, swap one of your tanks to motorize. So you don't actually get Panzer Leader, you're just sitting at 98, 99% and then keep grinding. Getting Panzer Leader first will slow down how fast you get organizer and cavalry leader. So you don't want to get it until you're done grinding everything else. You want to get all of your traits at the same time. Okay, so now we've gotten dispersed one. We need to start researching dispersed two. And then three days from now, we're going to be done the four year plan. So now we're going to appoint the captain of industry. And then we're going to continue on down to this research slot. Basic medium tank chassis is now done. We are going to stop off and get the anti tank gun. And then we'll use this to continue researching 1940 medium tanks. So quick little research update now that we've finished Disperse 2 and the anti-tank gun. We are going to continue on to Disperse 3 ahead of time. We have already continued on with advanced machine tools. The research thought that it was doing construction has now gone on to mechanical computing. And with this one, we are going to rush 1940 medium tank tech. Spanish Civil War wise, it's going good. Sep here has all of the traits he needs. He even managed to get himself hill fighter, which is worthless there's no hills in russia but you know what a trait's a trait and we are we're making good progress here on a uh, maximilian now that we have the anti-tank gun we should probably put it into production and i'll take one off of guns to do that and one off of fighters grinding wise we have a good amount of air experience though might make sense to either go for air crew surveys or industry liaisons. At this point, we are going to use our army experience to do professional army corps. This will pay itself off over the course of the game, plus it increases your army experience gain. And because we have the anti-tank gun, we are going to make a small improvement to our Panzer IIs. We're going to be producing this for Panzer IIs. These light tanks are going to provide the hard attack and piercing for our divisions. The medium tanks we're going to be building initially, they're going to have howitzers, they're going to provide the soft attack for the divisions, and the armor. This might be a bit fast. Actually, we'll drop it down to 9. It's highly unlikely we'll get the medium tank above 9 kilometers an hour with how much armor we're going to slap on it. So let's put those guys into production. Um, if you've seen the video, there's no point in converting from stockpile. That's just a little update where we are at. We're going to keep building sieves. Um, that's just a quick little update where we're at. We're going to continue going down to this research slot. And then from there, we're going to check on whether or not we can do the Anschluss. And to set up for that, we're going to start actually training real divisions. All right, so we've now finished the extra research slot. And we have divisions that can be deployed at this point in time. And if we deploy these guys early... We will be able to do Anschluss. With the research slot, with this research slot, you could come down here and you could get Dora, you could get the railway guns. I'm not going to. They're a pain in the butt to micromanage, and if you move fast enough, they're not very useful after the breakthrough. So with that being the case, I'm going to come down here and I'm going to get the medium howitzer. This is what we're going to put on our medium tanks to start with. You could also argue for using the close support gun. The close support gun has slightly less stats from a soft attack perspective, but it also costs no resources and it's cheaper to produce. So either or really. Also, the Sino-Japanese war just kicked off and we are going to send volunteers to that. We can still only send four. If we can only send four, we can send, we'll send four. We'll also send air volunteers. We are going to deploy some fighters and we'll send the fighters. Actually, we'll also deploy about 100 cas and send those as well. For the Sino-Japanese War, we're just going to be trying to hold Beijing here. Uh, if we don't hold it, that's okay, but that is the main goal. Construction-wise, we're still building civs. Alrighty, this happened on the same day. Spain has now capitulated and Anschluss has accepted. 
So with these free factories, I'm going to up our fighter production slightly, up our tank production slightly, and up all of our non-gun production slightly. I will be importing both of these at this point. Focus-wise, we're going to go get War Economy, Reich's Autobahn into War Economy, and then should be demand state and land time. I'm also going to get air crew surveys and fighter detection just to make sure we don't overcap our air experience. Um, political power wise, after we went to war economy and finished these guys, I appointed Krupp, Halder, then Man, then Ferdinand here. Uh, I went for Krupp because of the soft attack. Soft attack is far more important in single player. Uh, multiplayer, you definitely want to go for Porsche though. Henschel, reliability doesn't matter that much. And then, and I'm going to put the army regrouping guy in charge now. We'll put Rommel in charge later. With the Austrian divisions, we're going to recommission this template. I'm going to decommission this one. We're going to take every division in our army currently, all of the ones we just got from Austria, all of the ones we currently have, and we're going to swap all of these to this infantry division, and we're going to change this infantry division to not have the engineer company. Using this division over the one we started with is, will save us 10 army experience, and then we're just going to train these guys for the army experience. We are going to put two of the four factories we get from the war economy onto fighters, the other four onto guns. Meanwhile, we're still just building sieves. We're going to build sieves until all of these are full. So we just finished German war economy. We do not yet have enough manpower in the field to do demand state and land. So we're going to do air innovations. Uh, in the meantime, we will work on deploying 24 more units. Deploying 24 more units will give us enough manpower in the field to get man the state and land. Research wise, I'm working on artillery too. We're working on improved medium tank chassis. I am working my way towards the improved radio that's a lot of stats here We're working towards computing machine we've finished advanced machine tools and dispersed three i'm going to use this research slot just to get both excavation techs really quickly and for the time being we are saving up army experience i have not yet appointed a theorist of which we will appoint guterin because he's just better they have the same doctrine cost reduction and armor speed bonus for Guterin, nothing for von Manstein. So we're going to appoint Guterin, obviously, but we haven't appointed one of them yet because there's no bonus to appointing one earlier. You're better off getting your high command filled out sooner. So we're going to sit on this until we have him appointed. With air innovations done, we now have enough to go for demand state and land. So we're going to go down to fate of Czechoslovakia. Civilian factories wise, we haven't quite filled out these slots yet. Once we've filled those out, we are going to build refineries in the center, and then we'll switch to military production everywhere else. Let me do some quick math on this, actually. Generally speaking, you build to about 100 sieves. Realistically, I am overbuilding these by a bit. So we'll build up to four in each state, and then we'll spread out our synthetic refineries a little bit. Otherwise, I'm just staring at China, making sure we don't lose Beijing. Also, because we are generating so much air experience from this, from the constant fighting the Japanese, I appointed Messerschmitt, and I'm going to actually make an upgrade to the BF-109. We're going to give it max engines. This will also apply Messerschmitt to it, and we're going to put that into production until we have the Fighter 2s. Now that the tank chassis has completed, we can put that into production. We can put the artillery into production as well. With the research slot we are using to do computing machines, we're now going to go get the infantry equipment too. With these two research slots free, we'll start getting construction three, and we'll start working towards fighter twos. A bit late by some people's standards. It's single player, you don't need to rush them that hard. Tank design wise, we're going to go for welded armor, Christie suspension, the three man turret. We're going to go for the close support gun. I had a bit of a debate between the close support gun and the medium howitzer. The deciding factor is the medium howitzer costs two tungsten. The close support gun costs none. We're not going to bother with the medium howitzer. It's just way too much tungsten. And then we're going to go for basic radio. When we get improved radio, we'll add improved radio. Sloped armor because it doesn't slow you down. And then two machine guns. If we drop the armor down to here, we'll be able to keep up with the light tanks. But I'm not going to do that. I'm going to go with nine engines, nine armor. I've not researched the next level. Going up one costs chromium. So we're not going to do that. We don't have any chromium as Germany. That's just a waste of, of factories importing the chromium. We're going to take a couple of factories off of guns at this point. We're going to get a lot of guns from Czechoslovakia. So we don't need them there. And then we'll also take two factories off of the light tanks. We're working our way down through the air doctrines. This is just how much air experience we are generating from the Sino-Japanese war. 
With the fate of Czechoslovakia now finished, we are going to set up Slovakia as a puppet state because it gives you 50% compliance, which is very nice. I also just started making an agency. One thing you can do, which will put you a little bit behind your build, is if you make an agency early, if you get a 90% collaboration government on France, when you annex France and establish Vichy, you can immediately set up the collaboration government. What that does is the collaboration government will eat Vichy France, and in doing so, the collaboration government gets the entirety of Vichy France's navy. It's not really necessary to do that, but it does give you a collaboration government on the entirety of France, which gives you 80% of all of their factories. However, I have left it far too late to start building my intelligence agency this game, so we can't do that. But if you started doing this mid-1937 and then just continually doing collaboration governments on France, it'll cost you 60 civilian factories for 60 days, but it will also give you complete control over France. But anyways, for agency upgrades, we're going to do the four intelligences across the top. We're going to do all four defense. Suicide pills and interrogation techniques are useful. Localized training centers are necessary for spying on the USSR, which we're going to do. You need a collaboration government in the Soviet Union. Otherwise, you're going to basically have to march to Vladivostok to capitulate them. And then we might start doing a couple of these decryption upgrades. Don't do cryptology until you're about to go to war. The earlier you do this, the more time they have to decrypt you. Anyways, with the factories we just got. I think I'm just going to put them on tanks. We will need to up our Air Force size a little bit soon, but for now, it's fine. Next focus, we're going to go for Army Innovations 2. Research-wise, we've now moved on to doing Infantry Equipment 2. We're working on fuel refining. Air Doctrine-wise, I've been spending experience as we've hit the cap. Already, back to staring at Beijing, making sure it doesn't fall. So with coal liquidification done, we are now going to start going towards Danziger War. I've also taken the liberty of switching to industry liaisons. Aircrew surveys doesn't really do anything for us anymore now, now that we're done the doctrine. I've also now appointed Guterin so we can start doing our doctrine. With all the bonuses, this is only going to cost us 30. Without Guterin, it would have cost us 45. So this is the power of Germany in the new patch, the ability to just come all the way down here. We're already most of the way through the doctrine and most other countries are going to be up here somewhere. So this is your power early game. Otherwise, after Fate of Czechoslovakia, I did put into power funk research wise. I did start researching the advanced medium tank chassis. We will have this at the beginning of 41 approximately. We are also going to want to come down here to get the improved medium cannon. We are basically at the stage where we need to start preparing for our invasion of Poland. So at this point, I'm going to start deploying all of our aircraft. We have a good amount in stockpile. We could have more, but we don't need that much to deal with the Allies. We will get the Falkenwolf about the time the war starts. So we're going to get the Air Force training up. Division-wise, I've made our main division template. This is going to be our main division template. 21 wit engineer company, support artillery, support anti-air, support anti-tank. This is perfectly fine at defending. So this is what we're going to swap the entire army to. Motorized. We can go for a 9 and 4. Lots of soft attack on this. Good amount of breakthrough for the cost of this division. And then also going to want support anti-air, support anti-tank. I don't have the experience for this yet, but this is a really strong motorized division. This is going to be our tank division once we have the army experience for it. This is going to be our tank division once we have the army experience for it. We will get this army experience. We're gaining quite a bit a day. I just felt like showing you this right now. Same with the motorized. We'll get those two divisions when we have the army experience for them. Otherwise... Fuel Refining 3, we're going to use that 300% boost for it. With this research slot, we'll start doing the support equipment technology. We're also working our way towards the advanced radio. Plus 65% breakthrough is huge compared to the basic, which is only plus 25%. As we're building up towards war and we're starting to produce more and more of our military factories, you're going to want to go up towards 25 on fighters, 5 on casts. We're going to make do with 10 on medium tanks for now while we work up towards that. Um, we've also capped out on air experience at this point. We're going to dump that all into the fighter two when we get it. I've also built two radar stations just to help with the incessant amount of logistics striking the AI does when no combat's happening. Otherwise, we are just building mills right now. Otherwise, I'm, set, I'm starting to set up the army right Commander-wise, we're going to put Walter Modell in charge. We managed to get him organizer so he can have a logistics wizard, defensive doctrine, charismatic. This is good for a defensive field marshal. And we're just going to start appointing anyone with an infantry officer. 
and we're currently working on another army to hold the Magna. So the Falker Wolf 190 just finished. We're going to start researching the 1940 CAS. We're going to create a variant for these. We're going to max their range and max their engines. Reliability really does not matter. The amount of air accidents you suffer are is so small that it just in general does not matter. Don't worry about air reliability. Your losses to air combat will be 10 to 100 times larger than your losses from air accidents. Um, we are going to continue to scale up our air production and then our tank production. And then research wise, we're going for the anti-tank upgrades because we're going down here for the improved medium cannon. We are working on the support equipment, rubber processing, advanced medium tank, chassis. Otherwise, we have saved political power so that we can go to total mob on day one of the war. We have basically infinite war support because we've generated a, a bajillion aces fighting in China. Okay, so they've now refused. We're now going to do Molotov Ribbon Drop Back. You don't have to do this before taking Poland. Okay, so now that they've officially refused, we can declare war on them. That is extremely odd. I've never seen Poland have their independence guaranteed by Lithuania. Okay, that must be part of the new DLC. Let's pull back to here with these infantry in the north. Set up our navy just for the time being, and let's go to war. Okay, so now that they're all called in, we can go to total mode. And we will also do... See, you'd think it makes sense to do women in the workforce. But we actually want to up our service law. That's actually what makes sense. We'll still demobilize a little bit, but women in the workforce only works while you're at war. If we want to maintain this through peace, we need to go up to service by requirement. Lithuania just joined the allies. Okay, we can now go to extensive conscription. We will still demobilize down to 2%, but that's fine. We are battle planning Poland simply for the army experience. Now that the front lines have joined up, we can add them to the front line. They will now be able to push. Oh, they put up a lot more air, air than I expected here. I mean, we are shooting them down quite a bit, though. Okay, so there goes Poland. There's about 40,000 infantry equipment, which is nice. Now we're on to Lithuania. Okay, there goes Lithuania. And we caught a couple of French divisions here. Quite odd. Put von Manstein in charge of attacking the Netherlands. We'll put Erwin here in charge of Belgium. And we'll put the rest just behind a bit. Okay, we actually need more artillery than I prepared for. Focuses wise, we're going to finish Molotov Ribbon Drop Pact, we're going to do synthetic rubbery, and then we're going to go for radar, so we can get the most advanced radio for our tanks. We're not going to do Around the Maginot just yet. I'll be back when we get to Around the Maginot. In the meantime, we're just making sure this tank army is going to be ready. So the Molotov Ribbon Drop Pact just came into effect, and for some reason Lithuania got Wilno. Even though we're at war with Lithuania. So I'm going to have to send uh, a division over there to deal with that, but I just found that really weird. The game definitely does not consider the fact that you might be at war with Lithuania. Anyways, I just thought I'd mention this weird thing that happened with Wilna. It's now April 1940. We have uh, been LARPing as Germany IRL doing the Sitzkrieg. In the meantime, we got synthetic rubber and air innovation, so we are entirely self-sufficient on rubber now. Our tanks are fully trained up. We've got them to the full 30 width division, you're about ready to go to war. I've taken the liberty of building air bases up to 100 along the border here. We'll go for the construction speed for railways. I haven't built any railways to the west, but it does help to build a couple of railways to the east later on. Already, let's make sure our entire air force is actually over the Netherlands. So we are now ready to declare, and we are just going to battle plan with the infantry and the tanks that we have set up here. 
make sure they're set to aggressive so that they don't needlessly shuffle around too much. Alrighty, there goes the Netherlands. Um, we are going to pull the tanks back to here for a little bit. We're going to wait for the next eight days for these railways to be converted. Okay, railway gauge has been converted for no reason. Let's move all of the infantry up. We're also going to move all of the tanks up. I'm going to punch down towards Paris with them. I'm not going to declare war on Luxembourg right now because it messes up your front line on the Maginot. And I don't like establishing uh, fallback lines. Okay, we are ready to go. For some reason, the AI loves attacking across this river with one division. They do it. I've done this as part of testing like a hundred times. Okay, a hundred's a bit of an exaggeration. I've done it at least ten. And every time they attack with one division across that river. Okay, so now we're going to take the infantry and we're just going to continue on. Honestly, you don't even need tanks to do this. You can do this with pure infantry. But people like tanks. I like tanks. Tanks are great. So... We're just going to continue on. We're going to try and outrun our supply problems. Okay, yeah, there's the Fall of France event, or Falls Paris event. Huh. Not quite enough to capitulate them. Do they not have a disjointed government anymore? Oh, they do. It's just I don't have any other victory points. Hell. We have transport planes as well. Let's move those in. Okay, there goes the Fall of France. We're going to establish Vichy France. I just don't want to deal with the resistance. Meanwhile, we'll get von Manstein here to establish a naval invasion. I'll be back when we're ready to do the naval invasion. So at this point, I'm going to design a flame tank. I'm just going to cheap out on this tank. We'll add a dozer blade just to give a little bit of entrenchment. Otherwise, we want this, this tank to be as cheap as possible. But this is the flame tank we're going to be producing. Okay, we are ready for Operation Sea Lion. Um, Air Force wise, we're going to station everything over the channel just temporarily already let's put out the navy and click go oh they actually got there to help okay we're going to leave the tactical bombers in the channel and we're going to leave a couple hundred fighters everything else go help with the naval invasion Because of how long this took, we're going to hold right here. Well, okay, we're going to try and take that port, but otherwise we're going to hold right here. We can't afford to take London until after the month ends, just to guarantee that India doesn't become a major. But we can still, in that time period, get all of our divisions across. Okay, we're going to align Romania. And now that the month has ended, we can check India did not become a major. So we can now just battle plan them if we want. I mean, we have basically an entire infantry army here. Alrighty, and that's the capitulation of the United Kingdom. Because of Lithuania's oddness, we have this nice little encirclement opportunity with the Soviet Union. Also, don't forget to declare war on Luxembourg at some point. I'm going to take all of France. We're going to puppet. We're going to satellite the Dutch East Indies, puppet the rest. Take all of Belgium. And the United Kingdom. Oh, I accidentally puppeted the Netherlands. Satellite British Raj, Satellite British Malaya, puppet the UK. 
So that's the easy part done. Now we're going to spend the next year building up our tank core. We're going to work on getting these uh, advanced medium tanks into production and getting a couple more transport planes. They will be very useful for us. Okay, so focus order for the next year is going to be as follows. Finish the line in Romania. Reintegrate Alaska Lorraine. Improve national spirit. Anti-com turn pact war with the USSR. In the meantime, we're going to work on training up a ton more tanks, a little bit more motorized infantry, and probably close to another 72 infantry, maybe 96 if we have enough. We'll need to up anti-tank production, but we'll have enough. So the advanced medium tank chassis just finished, and, and we're going to want to build a new tank out of this. So this is... So these are the two tank designs we're going to be using. This Panther, which has the improved medium cannon on it, and then this Jag Panther, which has the improved high velocity cannon on it. We're going to be able to pierce everything we come up against with these divisions, and the improved medium cannon actually has a good amount of soft attack on it. We're also starting to build a spy network on the Soviets. You are going to have a lot of captured operatives doing this. But once we hit 50%, we've now hit 50%, we'll take our Soviet spy, put him on quiet network, and we'll send Scorsese to go rescue this lady. It is what he's famous for, after all. At this time, we're also going to prepare a collaborations government. We'll be sending these two to do it. You need a 30% collaborations government. With a 30% collaborations government, you can capitulate the Soviets by getting basically the A to A line. Without it, you're going to have to come all the way over here and start taking all of these states over here past the Urals. And it's just, it's not worth it. Just do the collaborations government on them. I'm also building up supply hubs just at the front line here, just to help with the supply situation a little bit. So we're now four days from war. I should have skipped doing improved national spirit. We would have been at war at the end of April, which is just better. And because of Italy's stupidity, we're actually at war with the Allies. First thing we're going to do in this war is we're going to make a push through to here from the north and the south to encircle this entire bit. We're going to push along the railway lines. Final update for these, we don't quite have enough to go to full medium tanks, so we'll stick with this high soft attack, enough hard attack to deal with any enemy tanks. 755 breakthrough is always nice. 100 piercing because we have this one tank. If we remove that one tank, it'd be 62 and we wouldn't be able to pierce ourselves. So let's get this show on the road. So that is one center pocket closed. That is a good portion of their army. Not much was able to escape because of how quickly we did that. Now we're going to use this infantry army to close the pocket while also attacking in with our tanks where we can. In the north, let's make sure we take Minsk. Hey, let's, these guys are just going for a, for a drive at this point.
Okay, so less than a month into this war, and we've already caused a million casualties. I'm going to be honest, it felt like more than that. But that is the power of tanks. Tanks are still very viable in that regard. I'm going to move up the Air Force. And at this point, we're just going to be able to battle plan. I'm going to set up a army group for these guys just to push them towards Moscow. I'll let everyone get back into position, and I'm just going to battle plan the rest of this. Doctrine-wise, we can now finish our land doctrine. And here, we'll just go for resistance suppression, I guess. And we're going to set the Soviet Union to martial law, just so we don't have any resistance issues. See, we do have two guys who can get infantry leader. Alrighty, let's go on to uh, phase two, the broad push. Make sure the AI takes the ply hubs. I'm going to build a railway from this one over here. And we've taken Moscow by August 1st. Okay, we are going to take the, we're going to take this army. We're going to send half north to take Leningrad. We're going to take the other half south somewhere towards Stalingrad um, along this river. We're going to have ma major supply problems here for until we uh, actually get these railroads converted. But not that big of a deal. Just keep moving and your supply problems are no problem. Unfortunately, they're advancing along the wrong side of the river. They're really bad at going along these uh, railway lines. So for anyone who doesn't understand the new supply system, it doesn't matter. <laughs> Has this not been read at any point in time or the last month? Nope. I don't have access to my three nearest supply hubs. Just keep trucking. We're going to take three tanks, bring them down here for Sevastopol. We're also going to work on moving up the Air Force. Okay, so I just noticed something. We're basically out of fuel. This is like a day before disaster kind of stuff. So let's just import as much fuel as we can. Okay, it's going up again. We've taken Leningrad. Okay, let's... Let's redo these guys. These three are going to come down to the south. Of the rest, we're going to have you guys come push in the middle. Except for we're actually going to take some of you guys and help push towards Stalingrad with you.
So we're going to advance across the bottom here. We're going to try and get down to Baku. Okay, just on to Stalingrad. Move you guys on to uh, Astrakhan, wherever you want to say that. Okay, that's the fall back who, how close are they? 97%. Get you guys to march back down here and retake that and that. Okay, we haven't actually taken the city yet. That's part of the problem. There's the capitulation. Pass a couple of times. We'll give Romania this section here just because it doesn't look that bad. And then we'll just annex the rest for ourselves. And that's the capitulation of the Soviet Union. Now, if you're going for a world conquest, right before that happens, you're going to want to declare war on someone else. Given that we're still at war with the Allies, it's fine. We'd managed to avoid the war with the Allies like we were supposed to Italy. Then it would have been fine. In general, anybody who says tanks are no longer good, they're very good. And if you don't understand the new supply system, um, it's simple. Just outrun your supply problems and you won't have a problem. I'd show you losses and everything, but these numbers are just wrong. There's a recent bug where it's just showing all of the enemy losses. Well, not all of them, but a good portion of enemy losses in your own losses. So, like, we only lost 514 support equipment to combat, but it's saying that we lost 2,400. Medium tank wise, if we scroll all the way down, what is that? 400 medium tanks to combat, but it's claiming we lost 2,000. It's a little hard up front to show our losses, even for infantry equipment. Just taking out this, this is nearly 90,000. We really only lost like 30,000 infantry equipment. Artillery, if we look at our actual artillery losses, 1,100. I hope it helps you guys out. I hope you enjoyed it. I'm going to be doing a multiplayer game tomorrow as the Soviet Union, where we're going to be testing the tank meta. The tank meta is the same as always. If you can make unpierceable tanks, great. If not, at least be able to pierce the enemies. And that's the tank meta. Alrighty, everyone. Have a good day. And I will see you guys later.